Kimray Electric Actuator is helping energy producers increase efficiency, lower emissions, and improve their operator safety. In this video, I am going to show you the basics of how easy it is to install and operate. Hi, I'm Ryan with Kimray, where we help energy producers solve their biggest control and challenges. We've made ordering the new electric actuator very easy. There are four options to choose from based on the connection size of your valve body. The yoke with the stem and the coupling block changes sizes, but everything above the silver band remains the same on all models. To mount the actuator, simply thread the four bolts into the valve body in any direction convenient for access. If you purchase it as a control valve package, it will be mounted for you. Let's go over how to connect the power supply. First, remove the lid. On the circuit board, wire the power supply into the positive and negative voltage input labeled VI positive and VI negative on the board. This is the 12 to 24 volt DC input and requires a 10 amp overcurrent protection device. After the connection is complete and the power is turned on, the green light will turn on. The actuator is equipped with a battery backup, which comes unplugged. After power is supplied to the board, you can plug in this battery. It requires a minimum of 16 volts to charge. If you're using 12 volts, the battery backup will not be applied. Note that if your wire size is incorrect or distance from the power source to the actuator is too long, there is potential for voltage drop issues. Okay, now I'll show you how to calibrate the actuator for your valve. It's important to not calibrate the actuator before it has been mounted. Without a hard stop, the linear screw can go past set point and must be readjusted. Now that you have mounted and powered it up, you will need to calibrate it to your valve body size. The screen will say calibrate valve. You will need to press the up button. It will now say calibrate press right. Press the right button and the screen will say finding open. Once fully open, it will say parking valve. Then it will drive closed. When calibration is complete, it will take you to the home screen. That's it. 35 seconds and your actuator is calibrated for a two inch valve body. This will vary by a few seconds depending on the valve body sizes. Should you ever need to recalibrate from the home screen, press right until you get to reset menu. Then press down and calibrate valve will show. Then follow the same process. Now let's talk setup for your application. Reverse protection is included in the hardware. So if the inputs are accidentally connected in reverse, the board won't function, but it won't be damaged. You can set the actuator up for discrete, analog, or Modbus operation. First, we'll go over setup for discrete. Discrete operation is like a light switch. It's either on or off, or in this case, open or closed. On the board, you'll see D1 positive and negative, and D2 positive and negative. What this means is that if there is a signal to discrete two, it will prioritize that signal over discrete one and override what discrete one is communicating to it. As an example, in an oil and gas application, discrete one could be used for level control in a separator with discrete two as a high level shutdown. If the liquid level rises to the level switch due to a malfunction of the level controller, it will override the signal coming from the level controller and shut the valve. These need to be active inputs of eight to 30 volts. You know your connection is complete when the green LED is on. Now, if you don't need that override signal, you can just wire discrete one and it will function without a discrete two signal. The power supply you're using for voltage in can also be used for your discrete signal power with the use of a jumper. When installing a jumper, make sure power is disconnected from the actuator. Discrete output, labeled D out on the board, can be used to relay the signal to a light or alarm on site. If discrete is like a light switch, think of analog operation like a dimmer. It may be partially open instead of only on or off. 
When set up for analog, the actuator will be able to control span. This means that any 4 to 20 milliamp device will be able to control the actuator between 0 and 100% fully open and closed. For example, say you want to set it up for a level controller on a separator, and you want to keep a set point where the valve doesn't fully close or open, but modulates. In this scenario, you would wire your level controller to analog positive and negative. The actuator knows what to do with that information and will act accordingly. Analog input wires should have loop power provided by the user or the controller. Because this actuator implements an isolated 4 to 20 milliamp input loop, the same power supply for voltage in can provide loop power. Analog output, labeled AO positive and negative on the board, can be used to relay the signal to a light or alarm on site. To see more about what the electric actuator can do for you, check out our electric actuator playlist.